Hi everyone, this is Duplex. Welcome back. Um, since the last episode, I have created a depot for steel. I haven't deployed any trains yet, uh, so I'll have to do that. I also created a depot down here for stone and coal. So those trains that were previously holding the stone and coal have been moved over there. Um, just one train of each for now, and I think that'll be sufficient for a while, probably. Um, since we got steel running, I've been using a lot of power, and um, actually at one point I had a power crisis because I had still only one row of miners on my coal patch over here, and I wasn't making enough solid fuel, um, and I ran out of fuel. so power production went down and I had to come over here and cut the power to half the base or to most of the base really. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, I put more miners over here on coal. Um, and I added a second yellow belt. Okay. So now I've got two yellow belts of coal, which are mixing with solid fuel and wood when I have it and we're back up and running. But you know, as you can see, we're we're close to our maximum capacity and that's and essentially all we're doing right now is making steel so i thought this would be a good time to get more power um, at the same time i didn't want to invest a lot in solar since the plan is to go nuclear long term um, so i i looked at my i looked at my production statistics for uranium 235 and over over the last hour, we've been making 0.2 per minute. Over the last 10 hours, we've been making 0.2 per minute. Okay, so 0.2 per minute seems like a pretty reliable indicator of how much uranium-235 we're producing. And right now I've got 180, I've got 280 pieces of it. All right, <clears throat> so the question was, is that enough to start making nuclear power now without Covarex enrichment? Um, so I took a look at uranium fuel cell. So the recipe is one uranium-235 will give me 10 fuel cells. Okay, each fuel cell will run a reactor for 200 seconds. Uh, so I threw a little spreadsheet together. So at 0 0.2 per minute production of U-235, um, each cell will, or I'm sorry, each, um, each piece of uranium-235, uh, wait a minute, I think I did something wrong. Oh yeah, yeah, each piece of uranium-235 will give me enough fuel to power a reactor for 33 and a third minutes. Okay, it's 200 seconds each. I divide that by 60 to get 3.3 minutes, and then I get 10 fuel cells for each piece of uranium. So I multiply that by 10, I get 33.3 minutes of, of fuel cells per reactor. Um, if I use two reactors, two reactors would give me 160 megawatts. Um, that would be 16.67 minutes. And at that rate, I would need one uranium-235 every 0 0.06 minutes. Okay, and since I'm producing 0 0.2 per minute, I have, I'm producing more than enough right now to be able to power for probably up to six reactors nonstop. You know, that's without doing all the, the fancy steam buffering and all that other junk, which I'm not gonna do. Okay, so, um, so that means that we're in good shape to start doing nuclear. So I crafted some, I crafted two reactors. I crafted some heat pipes, some heat exchangers, and some steam turbines. Um, I'm going to be using this modular nuclear plant blueprint that I've used in many other of my playthroughs. You can find this on factorioprints.com if you search for modular nuclear plant. Even though I'm saying all this, I'm sure somebody's gonna ask me for a link, so I'll try to remember to put a link <laughs> in the description, but 
it's easy to find. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then this has, um, this has a variety of plants starting from 160 megawatts, and then you can scale it up by adding more reactors. And, and each of these blueprints uh, will overlay the previous one. So it's a nice way to start small and scale up as you need more and more power. So I'm going to start with this one right here, two reactors. Okay, now to make the fuel cells, uh, besides the uranium, I also need iron plate. So I'm in the process right now of setting up a station to bring iron plate over to my uranium processing area. Um, now we don't need a lot of iron plates, so I don't necessarily want to have like a full train's worth of inventory over here. So rather than using, you know, the typical logic, one minus the item, where the item, you know, represents a full train's worth, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to say anytime my stock of iron plate drops below 100, which is one stack, then I'm going to output P equals 1, and that will bring the train. Okay, so that's the, that's the plan. And uh, like I said, I'm just getting that set up now. Um, I'm going to need all that. That will give me some free signal wire as well. I think most of you probably know, but if you have if you have signal wire and you copy it on your blueprint, the signal wire gets added for no cost. Okay, so then this needs to go into there. Okay, so I'm outputting P right now because there's nothing, there's no inventory showing. Uh, let me. Yeah, let me just put more power poles here. All right, and then I can relocate this one and still keep everything powered. Okay, and then I need an unloading system. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, let me, uh, do I want those splitters? I think I'll just, all right, let's copy the whole thing. I, I might get rid of that. And honestly, I don't know if I have enough room for that. Sort of. Okay, one, two, three, four. So it's going to start there. case I actually I'm gonna want to connect to all the chests because they're not going to unload evenly because I'm not doing I'm not doing parallel factories in this case right I'm just gonna have all these converge into one belt because I really don't need to use that much so I want to track all the inventory not just one train otherwise I'll end up with too much Um, yeah, and then I think I can just get rid of all of this and I'll just have it all go onto, I'll just have it all go onto a single belt and it's going to unload unevenly, but that's okay. Cause I won't call another train until I'm down to one stack. Okay. All right. So I'll just send the belt. I don't know, down here, I suppose. Um, 
I don't have any more belt in the train. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough belt here. So it's one, two, three, and four. And then we'll load on to the other side of the belt there. That way the belt will be full. Yep, this is faster if I do it myself. Okay, and now I'm going to make some filter inserters. Eight of those. These chests are all full. Okay, and I'm gonna set these to uranium-235. Okay, so now I've got 235 and I've got 238. And I'll have iron plate coming down here in a few moments. Let's finish getting that train brought in. And then we can start to make some fuel cells. Um, hmm. All right. This design I normally feed with logistics bots, but in this case, I'm gonna to have to modify it to work with belts. Not a big problem. Okay, so let's check the priority schema. I want iron plate. Oh, I didn't make one yet, did I? Okay, well I'm gonna want, I'll pull from iron plate one. So I'll make a new, I'll need to make a new schema for the iron plate. Iron plate one, and we are going to use the iron plate one depot for that. Save, there we go. Okay, did I pull one in? Oh, I have three trains coming now, wonderful. Okay, so now I need to connect this to this, and this to that and do the old M less than P bit. Okay, do I really have three trains coming? Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, <laughs> boy, I screwed that up, didn't I? Uh, let's see. I don't have any way to get those to get that to switch to the other side, do I? Not enough space. All right, I'll just balance it at the end. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these two trains to manual. I'll get rid of this unload condition there and I'll just send them back to the depot. And I think as soon as, if I get my train out of the way, then they should be able to go through there and get back to the depot. Yeah, there we go. And 
and then hopefully they'll just stay there. I think it's bringing me another one. 30,000 plates. When, when it's less than 100, give me a signal. Actually, let's make it when it's equal to zero. Okay. Dude, get out of here. And please don't send any more. Am I actually getting another one? Okay, that one's going back. There's another one there. Okay, I only had those three trains. All right, let's keep an eye on this one. Hopefully, hopefully when it goes back to the depot, it'll decide not to come back here. Okay. Should I delete that? Yeah, just to be safe. Okay, good. Yeah, so we'll wait until this is just completely empty before we bring more iron, and that way it'll, you know, I'll still have tons of iron on this belt to keep making fuel cells. Okay then, um, let's see how we want to do this. So let's have one machine right there. Making my fuel. Um, I did make two level two productivity modules. That's the highest level I can make right now. So we'll get even more and we'll use, we'll consume even less of this stuff. We can do yellow inserters here. Doesn't need to be fast. cells. So I'll have this go into a chest. And I'll tell this to run when fuel cells are less than, let's say 20. Should be more than enough for now. Okay. Actually, let's not even do that. Well, that's fine. And then it's going to come out and I'm going to have another really long belt with lots and lots of fuel cells sitting on it. Okay. Um, now we've got a lot of water here, so this would be a good place to build the reactor, I suppose. I expect that by the end I'm going to need a very large 
array of these things. Maybe I can just build them from here facing in and then just start to work my way down with array after, pardon me, with array after array. Um, <clears throat> and then where I need more water, I can bring in, I can bring in the water trains to feed water to the reactors. But at least from here, I can, I can feed them directly from this big pond. Okay, so we'll just do this. All right, so let's go set up the reactor. Um, I'm gonna need a couple offshore pumps. Let's extend this down. And then I'm going to make sure that I have enough room for to unload water. Well, you know, I'll do the unloading on this side of the rail. No, I want it to be on this side. That way the water, because the water trains are going to come down this way. And then I can just pull off of this, of this rail to unload water. All right, and for now, I'll just put a U-turn down here at the bottom. So a fluid, this is what a fluid unloading station would look like. All right, something like that. And let's say I was doing two into two tanks. Let me turn the bots off for a minute. I only want to see the... see this part. All right, now let's look for the largest one, 1.4 gigs. Okay, yeah, so there's plenty of space here. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of this. I was just kind of see to see where we are size wise. Make sure I'm leaving enough room to have water unloading stations on the inside of the rail. So I'll just bring, I'll bring the first reactor array out pretty far. Um, let's look at that large one again. So I wanna make sure I leave enough room on the ends. All right, so let's say we put it right about here. All right, bots are still turned off. Okay, yeah, so then what I'll do is I'll just, I'll delete everything except for the reactors. And then I'll grab the starter one, 160 gigs. Uh, okay, and does that line up with the first two reactors? All right, so on this one, the, f the two reactors are lined up with the second pair of the full set. Okay, so the first one goes there. Okay, 
and then I'll erase again to get rid of all the extra stuff that we don't need right now. And then I'll paste it down yet another time. Boom, and there we go. And then I'm gonna have to figure out how we feed this thing from belts instead of robots. Uh, and we're gonna need a belt for we're gonna need a belt for spent fuel cells as well. Okay. Yeah, I think there's I think there's room in this blueprint for belts. We'll need two belts on both sides. One for the fuel cells coming in and then another one for the spent fuel cells to come out so they can get reprocessed. Okay. I could do I wonder if I could do a loop like this okay this is just to see where the end is going to be but let's say I bring I bring my fuel cells down here. All right, let's have this loop go the other way. Whoops. Reverse, reverse. Reverse. Whoops. Just press the R key. That'll reverse the belts. What if they did that? Oh, yeah. I know how to play Factorio. Okay, right, so if I keep, if I keep the fuel cells on the bottom side of the belt, then here they will come out. Yeah, they need to be on the right side of this belt, and then I can put the spent cells on the other side of the belt. I think that'll work. And I'm out of belts. Okay, I'm gonna fly back. Where am I going? I need a compass on this thing. Ugh, that's a long flight. That way I can use the same, I can use the same belt to handle the spent cells as well as the fresh cells. I don't really need two belts. Okay.
too far. All right, this will give us 160 megawatts, which is which will be enough to power everything we have now. So this this plus the steam power that we've already got will pretty much double our fuel capacity. Oh, this is going to be a problem. What if I use a long red one? I don't think that's going to be long enough. I don't really like the thought of moving the pole. But I guess that's better than having a strange belt arrangement. Okay. And this is on the wrong side of the belt already. be on the on the right side of the belt looking at it this way which is going to be the top side of the belt when it's going from west to east up I mean we're gonna use up a ton of this uranium just to fill this belt so what can we do about that we could use some signals down here to monitor the contents of the belts themselves and only send more down when the belts are when the belts are empty That's kind of a pain. And also right now, I'd like this to loop around. And again, you know, that's again, so that I don't have to completely fill the belts. Right? can do it like that. So let's see what happens when those fuel cells get down here. Where are they? Here they come. Right, so we could do something like, can I hook, I can't hook a circuit up to these undergrounds. The undergrounds will hold stuff.
Okay. So I'm setting these. I'm going to create this circuit to read the contents of the belt. all the way down. All right, this one's gonna be difficult. this pole. So this pole will tell me how many fuel cells are circulating on these belts at any given moment. All right, and just to for the sake of completeness, let's do that. And let's also include all of this. This one too, right? Okay. All right, so now I can see that there are 32, around 32 fuel cells circulating. The only time we lose track of them is when they go into the undergrounds, but there's nothing we can do about that. Uh, we need those for heat pipes to come out. Okay. And now that that is connected there, we can run a signal up to where we're making the fuel. Again, taking advantage of our of our free wire mechanic. Okay, so now we can tell this to only operate when fuel cells on that whole system of belts down there is less than, uh, you know, it's still gonna fill up this whole belt though. I really need to, I need to have this entire, I need to have this entire set of belt this entire belt needs to be included in that.
And then in this case, I don't really need... I don't really need all that red wire, since I can just read it directly from here. Right. give this some water so we're not wasting this fuel <laughs> we're just getting things hot and not producing any power from it right now there we go spent fuel cells out of here to go back up. stuff here on the end that you're not using. It's kind of a waste. Okay. There we go. But if this is working properly, then all of my spent fuel cells should be coming out. What? What the heck? Okay, let's try this again. I don't I don't know why that happened. That's inevitable. All right. Um, and then for now, I think I'll just put these into a chest for now. Can I do the reprocessing? No. All right. I haven't researched that yet. Yeah. So for now, I can just put all these into a chest.
and then once we get that researched, we can start to deal with those. Okay. All right, so I've got 10 circulating around, 10 on the entire belt, right? And for now, that's enough. So I'll tell that inserter only to put more under these belts when there are less than 10 fuel cells in circulation. Okay, right now it's right now it's green. Oh, okay, I got a hook. I gotta hook that up. And then let's hook this to there so we can read it. Sixteen. Okay. That should work. And then I can get rid of this. And then you get these nice little blinking lights as, as they move around. Okay, so that way we'll always have 16 fuel cells on the belts to be picked up when needed. Maybe not precisely when needed. But you don't have to you don't have to reinsert fuel right away. I mean, first of all, it's going to buffer five inside anyway. But even if it wasn't, um, you stop giving it fuel, it's still going to make steam for a while because it holds a lot of heat. So until it gets down to until it gets down to less than five hundred degrees, it'll still make heat, and that takes a couple of minutes. All right, that's not bad. I'm rather pleased with that, to be honest. Um, what else was I going to do? Oh, okay. I know what I was going to do. Let's set up something to where we turn off the steam power when I have lots of nuclear power available. Where's my train? Down here. Let's take the train home. Because this plane is too slow. All right, and then uh, I'll build an accumulator. And we'll just tell that accumulator, or we'll tell the, we'll feed water to the steam power uh, whenever the accumulator drops below, you know, 50% or something. That way, if I, if I need more power than what the reactors can provide, I'll get some. And in the meantime, I won't burn up coal and solid fuel that I don't really need to because the game will kind of balance the power needs between steam engines and turbines for some reason it likes to do that um, and the thing with nuclear nuclear power is that you you use the same amount of fuel no matter how much power you're producing Right, the, the amount of fuel you consume is only dependent on how many reactors you have. It's not dependent on how much power you use or how much power you produce like with the, uh, with the other stuff. All right, so I need a few batteries. Yeah, I need five batteries. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll make a single accumulator. That's all that we need. Okay, and then these two are getting water from there, and these two are getting water from here. Okay. So I'll put this accumulator right here, kind of in the middle. We need to Get that connected to the power. Okay, and then it'll charge up. All right, so now you can read a signal called A, which is the percentage of charge in the accumulator. All right, as long as we're producing more power than we consume, the accumulator will always stay at 100%. If we start to consume more power than we're producing, 
then the accumulator charge will drop and that's when we need the steam power all right so what i'll do here yeah that's not long enough that won't be long enough either it's got to stay connected there okay so i'll run that signal here and then to each of those water pumps and I'll tell these water pumps to turn on and feed the coal generators or the coal furnaces anytime A is less than 50%. And I'll do the same down here. Okay, and once you turn the once you turn the water off, um, they'll gradually use up all the water that's in the pipes. So you can see these ones down at the end are starting to turn off. There, and now they're all turned off. Yeah, you can see that these pipes over here feeding this side are empty. These pipes are empty. Okay, and without water, they don't burn fuel, and uh, that way we won't consume any. And we're still making plenty power with the nuclear reactors. Okay, let's see how our steel production is going. Doing well, we've got some full chests already. Let's make a steel train. Maybe we'll do two. Let's do two steel trains. So that's going to be five, six, seven, eight locomotives. And five, ten, fifteen, sixteen cargo wagons. Okay, and we're going to tell it to go to steel load until full, and then go to steel depot until it gets a circuit condition. Okay. Good. So let's take that off the to-do list. And then, like we said before, next step is making science packs. Uh, we got a little sidetracked because of the power situation, but that didn't take too long to put together. Let's see how we're doing in our fuel cell production. I think we're still looking good. We got four, 67. All right, yeah, we still have well over 120. Let's see how many of these we've got. All right, we've used up 10 of them so far. 10, 
That's uh, divided by two reactors. That's five each times 200 seconds, a thousand seconds. Divided by 60. Okay, 17 minutes. Sounds about right. Why do I have so many on the belt? It should stop when there's 10, right? Well, the number goes up and down a lot, I guess, depending on how many are in the underground belts. Yeah, it's too bad that that happens. Um, it would be nice if we could read the content, contents of the undergrounds. But I guess we'll just have to deal with that. That's okay. It just means we'll make a few more fuel cells than we really need. Not a big deal. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.